Now we've got our basic web application running. We're going to start modifying some files and seeing how that impacts the web application running in our browser. So the first thing we're going to try and do, again, referring back to the tutorial that we're going to be following uh, on Microsoft.com, the first bits and pieces we're going to change are setting up some styling changes. So we're going to Visual Studio to do this. Now, just a note, if our web application, web application is still running, uh, we will notice that the diagnostic window is still running. It, the bar at the bottom is red and we have this stop uh, button here. So to be able to keep on working on our project, we would stop it and that will stop, stop our web application running. And we'll note that if we try and refresh it in the browser, it then won't be able to access that it can't be reached because essentially we've stopped the, the local server that's triggered from Visual Studio. So now we go back to the environment we were used to at the beginning. We've got our Solutions Explorer back and we can start modifying some files. So I'm going to close this welcome page because I don't want that there. Let's go back to our tutorial. So it's asking us to modify pages shared layout. So let's go and find that file. So pages shared layout. Let's have a look at this file so we can understand what's going on. So as we can probably guess, this layout file controls the main layout for the application all the way through. So we've got it as a single template file. And here's our HTML head and here's our body. And we have some uh, we have a header here and within the header we have our nav navigation and then we have the container div and then render body so this will allow us to inject the content for any page into this layout template and it means that the header the navigation the footer can remain the same throughout the web application which is good we don't want to have to copy and paste the same code to different pages so we could make some changes here um, and see how they take effect but what we're going to do first let's let's just change the the title let's add some spaces so this is the meta title so this is the title that will appear in the browser tab up here and also google pays attention to uh, the meta titles of pages. The other changes that the tutorial wants us to do um, is to make some tweaks here. So navbar brand. I think we'll actually just leave that as it is. But it wants us to add some links. So let's do that. Okay, so let's just copy and paste this chunk of code here. And we will we have to be very careful here not to kind of break our HTML. So we have to make sure what we're we actually replacing. Um, so this is within uh, Navbar Collapse, uh, which is here. And these are the LI or list item elements. There are currently two. We've got home and we've got privacy. Okay, so we've copied all this all this code. Let's just double check we, we selected the right code. I'm going to do it again just to be sure. And we will replace those list items. And let's just tidy up to make sure our indentation kind of looks okay. Okay, great. So if we hit save, let's let's just test that change by hitting run. And we'll open it in our browser. Okay, so now the web application has rerun and opened in our browser. And the differences we can see now is that the navigation has some different menu items on it. Note that we're still logged in. So even though we've stopped the web app and running it again, we are still logged in because we haven't logged out. And that's kind of powered by local cookies, um, local session. Um, but we don't need to worry too much about that. That's that's completely normal. Now, if, if we click on some of these links, um, what you'll see actually 
if you hover over them, the address that they go to is not the address that we've specified. And actually they just link back to the home page. This is ASP.NET knowing that these pages don't exist yet and it's just redirecting them back to the home page rather than going to a 404 not found um, error. Now, the reason these don't work yet is because we haven't built out the pages, uh, but the tutorial got us to add these menu items because we are going to set up these pages and implement the associated uh, functionality. So let's look at the next steps. We don't need to worry about editing the footer. That's just a, a tiny change, visual change. Then in the tutorial here, we have some explanations about um, what we've been doing. So again, the layout file, it sets the site header, footer and menu. We've made some small changes. Now here, if we go, it's then asking us to go into the pages index file. So we're just gonna stop running again. And we will open the pages or the index page. So we'll close our shared folder just so it doesn't distract us. Then we'll open our index. And it wants us to uh, replace it with um, some different code. So there's some sample here. Now we don't have to do this, but it's just will show us uh, a different looking homepage. Note that the bits and pieces at the top, we can compare, they're actually the same. We've got this uh, page uh, declaration at the top, then a model that's actually the same. And then we've got this uh, razor code block here. Anything beginning with the at symbol is what we call a razor syntax, which is essentially server side code that will execute in a, in a, in a page or a view. And the view data title, we can just leave that as it is. But what it wants us to add is all of this kind of boilerplate content. So we'll do that. Let's copy and paste all of that. And we'll replace that code, put that in there. And we can see that this content um, is, well, this will actually be a three column layout, which we'll see when we run it. But note that these classes, if you're not familiar with these, these are essentially bootstrap classes. So bootstrap is a CSS framework that lets us style things out uh, easier and quicker without having to write lots of styling rules manually. If you're not familiar with Bootstrap, it's uh, not going to be covered in this tutorial series, but good for you to, to go away and understand what can be done uh, with Bootstrap. So let's save that. Let's run it again because I want to see what changes have been made uh, to our homepage. Okay, so now we've rerun the project and we've opened it in our browser and we can see a change uh, immediately to our homepage. We've got three columns now, um, nothing groundbreaking, but a bit of content in three columns. We've got borders around them, um, which is fine. Um, we can see that actually, if we wanted to get rid of the border, we could get rid of the border class on each of these divs. Um, which would probably be my preference. Uh, let me also show you how that because we're using Bootstrap and that comes as standard with .NET Core projects, this layout is also mobile responsive. So to demonstrate that, if we if you right click and inspect, we can open uh, developer tools. If you're in Chrome, or you can open the equivalent in whatever browser you're in. And if we toggle or make sure that the device bar is toggled enabled we can reduce the width of our, our web app and i'm just going to refresh to make sure this is kind of showing the, the latest version and you can already see here that the layout has adjusted to a kind of mobile layout there's a little bit of overlap going on here with the navigation button, but we'll see if we can fix that later. But you can see that the, what was originally columns, three columns in the desktop layout, has stacked into a single column, which is suited to mobile. And the main navigation, rather than being links across the top, has turned into 
a drop down menu again more appropriate uh, to mobile optimization so i just wanted to demonstrate that for you we'll close devtools for now and just go back to desktop view uh, this will be the the main view that we use uh, to build out our web application so going back to the microsoft tutorial we've made a few couple of front end changes that just demonstrate how we can make changes and then check them in the browser just a, a little troubleshooting tip if you're not seeing the changes apply sometimes it'll be your your browser has cached the local styling or the html so to do a hard refresh will sometimes fix the issue it's a common issue it can even still catches uh, me out even though i've been coding for a long time it can often catch newbies out and that's totally fine but so i wanted to raise it so a good way to make sure you are viewing the latest version of the page and it hasn't been cached make sure you reload the page uh, on windows you could do Control r or i believe Control shift r to kind of do a hard refresh